We're going to look at sound. Now, sound is a longitudinal wave, which means that the medium which carries the wave, the particles move parallel to the direction of the wave. And you can see here the particles are moving diagonally from side to side this way, uh, but the wave is moving diagonally like this. So the wave is moving diagonally and the particles move diagonally in the same direction and back again. Now, the sound wave's speed depends on the medium that it's in. In air, it travels at around 340 meters a second. In water, it's three times faster than that. And in solids like steel, it travels 15 to 20 times faster than, than that. So basically, the more dense the material, the faster the sound travels. There is a demo that you can find on the internet which shows you that if you take the medium away, then the sound basically just does not travel. It needs a medium to carry the oscillations. This thing here is basically uh, the skin of a drum, which is oscillating from side to side. So what basically happens is that sound is a, is a longitudinal compression wave. This red thing, which is the skin of a drum, is basically vibrating from side to side. And then what it does, it squashes the layer of air particles to the right. And this squashing causes an area of compression which moves to the right. So this is what sound is. The sound is carried by the air particles which oscillate parallel to the direction of the sound wave. We need to look at what a sound wave looks like. For this, we need a cathode ray oscilloscope which is one of these devices, it helps us to see the sound wave. We also need to connect it to a signal generator which makes the sound and a speaker so that we can hear it. So we have a signal generator which basically goes to the speaker and makes the sound. But then we need to see what this looks like so we connect this to the CRO, the, the cathode ray oscilloscope. And what we need to do is basically change the different frequencies and see how it sounds like in terms of its volume and its pitch. First of all, what you're going to do is listen to the whole range of the frequencies that we can hear. What's the lowest frequency? What is the highest frequency that we humans can hear? This friend here has a very different range of frequencies to the frequencies that we can hear. You know that bats are able to use ultrasound, which is a very high frequency. And here we have humans hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Bats, for example, can hear between 2,000 hertz and 120,000. So there's a whole range of high, high pitched squeals that we can't hear that the bats can. And the same goes for dolphins and, and mice. Even cats and dogs can hear frequencies that we can't hear. What you need to be able to do is to be able to recognize or sketch a graph of what the sound looks like for different kinds of sounds. We will compare a low pitch with a high pitch. A low pitch has a very long wavelength. A high pitch has a very short wavelength. We also need to compare the high volume with a uh, low volume. And here we have it here. A high volume has a very high or large amplitude. A quiet sound has a very small amplitude. So I have a, a question for you. If you have a, a loud high-pitched whistle, like somebody blowing a, uh, a whistle really loud and really high pitch, which one does it look like? Number A, uh, screen A, B, C or D. Well, basically, if it's loud, it's going to have a, a high amplitude. So it's either this one or this one. If it's um, a high pitch, it's going to have a short wavelength. So it's either this one or this one. So it must be C. It has a small wavelength and a large amplitude. On the other hand, if we have a quiet, deep sound, 
What will that sound like? Will it be A, B, C or D? Well, if it's quiet, it's going to have a, uh, if it's quiet, it's going to have a small amplitude, so it's either going to be A or B. If it's a deep sound, a low sound, it's going to have a long wavelength, so it's either B or D, so it must be B.